I'm Dr. Janet Ip, and I'm a family physician with spinal cord injury patients. And oftentimes these patients ask me about sexual function after their injury. Can you tell me more about your sexual medicine clinic and what happens there? My background is that I'm a sexual medicine physician, so mm -hmm. I see a lot of uh, spinal cord patients with regards to sexual and fertility changes. We have a couple clinics. Uh, one of them is based out of GF Strong, and that is where we see mainly the sexual components of uh, problems after spinal cord injury. But we also have a Vancouver sperm retrieval clinic, which is specifically to help men uh, with spinal cord injury become biological parents. One of the things that we try to help men, especially quads with, is to try to ejaculate safely. And by safely, I mean that they don't provoke ep episodes of, or they will provoke some autonomic dysreflexia, but not to the point where it's, you know, damaging, that they'll get a severe headache or stroke or something like that. And there's a theory that possibly uh, orgasm for some men with spinal cord injury has to do with a variation of autonomic dysreflexia. Mm. So that initially, you know, autonomic dysreflexia might be a real pain because it's, you know, sweating and headaches and awful, but as time passes, that can be sort of, it's really neuroplasticity in the brain that slowly makes that more of a pleasurable sensation. That's the hope. Um, the, the issue is that ejaculation is not the same as orgasm. So I did a big survey about why men want to ejaculate after spinal cord injury. Fertility was a very small portion of mm. that. It was for pleasure, right? Okay. Uh, totally understandable. Um, the men that come to our clinic, they get assessed for their level of injury and their completeness and their history of autonomic dysreflexia. So if they've got episodes of that, especially around bladder and bowel issues, then we're going to kind of predict that they're going to be at high risk to have it when you place a very strong vibrator on. Um, the good thing about vibration is if you feel that you're getting dysreflexia, you can take the vibrator off and you've removed the cause of the dysreflexia. So that's good. I mean, you have some control. Mm -hmm. When you've got a block catheter, you know, and that's not fixed quickly and you go to emerge, right, it takes right. a long time, right? So there is some control to it. One of the things we do is we put you on a blood pressure cuff, we monitor everything. If it gets way too high, we'll stop. We can also try medication like uh, to, to lower your blood pressure safely. What kind of medication would you be talking about? Uh, okay. One of them is prazosin, another one is nifedipine. Right. The trouble with taking medications willy-nilly is that they lower your blood pressure, so that means when the stimulus is removed, you can get too low blood pressure, oh, okay. hypotensive, and then pass out. So the ideal uh, vibrator was developed in Denmark uh, called the FertiCare. That doesn't mean that other vibrators don't work. So lots of men have gone out and got commercial vibrators from uh, you know, shops, either sex shops or better still, the big heavy duty massage things. And sometimes that works, sometimes they crack it open and they manipulate it and hot wire it so it's really strong. In my experience, some of the guys are very keen to have this ejaculation, they'll try at home, they'll put on this massive vibrator and then they basically blow their head off and that's mm -hmm. not a safe thing to do. So if you're a quad, especially a complete quad, it's much better to try to get some supervision around the vibrator um, and you can come to a clinic and you can measure your blood pressure and just make sure that there's some um, monitoring so that it's safe for you to do it. Now realistically in the big world I know that everybody can't come to a clinic mm -hmm. and I know that people do are very keen and they want to try this and they read about vibrators and they may go out and purchase the special one which costs six or seven hundred dollars US mm -hmm. to try and you know I can't stop that I just want the message out that it's if you're a, a high lesion and especially a complete lesion to be extremely careful and come to a clinic if you can for those initial assessments. The other thing I've learned over the years is that initially when you first ejaculate, the chances of dysreflexia are very high and um, as you proceed with more and more ejaculations, the symptoms of the dysreflexia seem to get better. Mm -hmm. So some men that were really having a hard time initially, three years later, they're ejaculating every couple weeks or something to try to have a baby, for example, and then their symptoms get much better. But when we put them on the blood pressure machine, their, their blood pressure is still very high. Now that said, um, I'm a sexual medicine physician. 
I am very pro uh, having a sexual life and that's normal quality of life so I don't want people being scared to never be sexual. It's just that after injury you're learning your body and you've got to sort of listen to the signs of it to make sure that you don't do anything silly <laughs> but to keep persisting about your sexuality and hopefully you know safely you'll be able to ejaculate.